chocolate cake. Play begins, it opens on uh, David's birthday. Every year, uh, wherever he is, he's a world traveler, he always calls home to his family in Calgary and Winnipeg. I'm happy to do this, little brother. Happy birthday. The character of Kathy is creating a birthday cake because they're going to huddle around the phone and they're going to sing happy birthday and then all of her kids get to eat the cake. Pretty good deal. The play begins, the phone doesn't ring by the end of the day. And so Mom's worried now. Mom's pacing now. The next morning she wakes up and thinks something's terribly wrong. And what happens is she then charts the course to try to find her brother. We, we, she spends time struggling with the family in um, Canada where, where she can wait no longer. She gets on a plane to try to find her brother Madeira and the play takes off. <laughs> when I used to be the traveler in the family, she worried every minute, and I quote, if only you would stay home. To me, what's the most exciting thing about the whole project is it's a true story. It happened to a Calgary woman, and she sat down and wrote about it. The story took place in 1995. I probably started writing um, the very beginnings of it, probably 1997, as the series of poems. And they moved into essays, and at one point I decided to put the essays together and make a full-length manuscript. Almost eight years it took to, to finish, and not just finish, but actually to let it go. Two years ago, I found Kathy's novel on a bookshelf in a bookstore, and uh, I, remember, I remember where I was standing, I remember the um, bookshelf, and I remember, I don't know why, like I saw that one, I pulled it off, and I wow, that's a beautiful cover, lost a memoir. I opened it up, I saw your picture, and I started reading your story, and it said, Calgary Woman, and I thought, I'm buying it. This, I live in Calgary, I gotta read the story. And then I started to have this feeling that something great might happen with it. And uh, a few months later, I was sitting in my cottage in Ontario reading it, and about halfway through, I thought, We're, this is a play, this is a play, this should be done on stage, a one-woman show. The most important thing, though, that, that affected me about Dennis was that faith or commitment or belief or I don't know what the word the right word is that the project could make it all the way to the end and make it on stage and and be uh, meaningful and important and um, uh, well and dramatic and satisfying and and that amazed me and now look at you sailing the Atlantic with your girlfriend Sarah I hope you're taking lots of pictures because it's an adventure story and because it travels around the world, I thought we could actually, through the use of multimedia and video and music and um, uh, this you know, and gorgeous um, steel and glass set, we could um, create a magical world where, where we'd see her travel. And for me, I'm a big, I, I love traveling and I love the adventure stories and I love when people get on a plane and do something. So um, I thought that was what was inherently active and theatrical about it was here was a woman in Calgary um, f uh, kind of chosen or forced to find out about the world, um, parts of the world that she didn't know by trying to find her brother. Ten years ago, I was the one walking up the gangway of a sailing ship and you were keeping my secret. When we started working on it uh, in the workshops about 18 months ago when I started hearing Jan uh, say the words, I think part of me thought, oh, it was always meant to be told orally and where else but on the stage. Oh, poor mom, I thought she'd kill us. Rubber eggs, the most brilliant invention. It's an inward looking book, so it's quiet. And when Jan's on stage um, saying these words, of course she can't say them quietly or inward. This is a dramatic production, so she's loud and she's passionate and at times she's angry and hurt and lots of emotions. I would have thought a husband would know how old his wife is. My actual age was a surprise to him. And when I'm watching her, I really have that sense of wanting to say yes, yes, louder, more, you know, because um, I, I couldn't do that. I will be grateful when it's all over and Mom and Dad return to Winnipeg. Everybody would like in this country, or I don't know, maybe Western countries in general, is to be more comfortable talking about um, the grief that we experience in our life. And by sharing it, it just is a lot better. It's called Lost. It sounds so um, <laughs> intense and hard, and it is. But there's great beauty that can come out of these things. Um, I, I, I really want audiences to come away um, empowered about living an adventurous life. You know, um, it's said in the play, dreams don't let go and it's said a few times, and you realize that by the end of it, 
you got to love the people who dare to dream in Technicolor, like Kathy's brother. I can't remember the last time you were actually in Canada for your birthday. A really wonderfully told story that's really just a great piece of theatre and visually exciting and, and different than we've done at Theatre Calgary and vibrant, but I think the takeout way needs to be, and Kathy has made this very clear to me, it needs to be uplifting. She does not want people walking away saying, poor Kathy. It's not about poor Kathy. It's about, you know, my great brother and my great learning from this. Happy birthday, dear David. Please call tomorrow. <sighs>